Here we go. So hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 11th um, Global Community Call of the Open COVID-19 Initiative. Uh, it's getting um, kind of like a family here. Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> We've been uh, uh, reconvening for almost, uh, almost three months now. And, uh, and I'm, I'm glad, actually, that we, uh, we got this file together and uh, and uh, and we, really we, we can feel like there's so much you know potential still actually to be uh, to be developed there and uh, so I'm looking forward very much to hearing from from you and and, and the updates you want to share regarding the projects we've been working on. Um, so um, as usual, we'll be starting with some general updates regarding the program, uh, and then Mark will be also sharing some. Uh, some news about uh, the general dynamics of the committee. Unfortunately, we won't have Leo this time during the call. Uh, he had some other obligations, so we won't have the user updates from the platform. We'll have to wait for the next week for that. Um, so regarding the, the general updates, uh, as you've probably seen, we just launched the third round of applications. Academic researchers in the Oops. topic who might be able to. I'm going to mute everyone. Yep, by default. Um, so as you've seen, um, we, uh, we've just launched the third round of applications for, for projects to get reviews uh, and also uh, Drupal micro grants. Um, and uh, for the one that uh, won the second round, um, I know that you haven't yet uh, received the funding. It's still uh, in progression. The banks are just nightmarish right now it's it's it takes it takes so many uh you know back and forth communication with them especially when it is about international uh transfer so uh, i apologize it takes that much time but it should be done this week i believe i'm crossing my finger um and um the the the, the great the great news also uh, i think one of the biggest that we can announce uh today is that we're doing a partnership with the igm foundation for the one that uh, for the ones that doesn't know that don't know yet uh, iGEM, it's a massive uh, synthetic biology competition that's been organized for 15 years now, uh, and uh, it's mostly done organized for students, um, where students comes into uh, interdisciplinary group and they develop a synthetic biology research project uh, that they have to uh, to present uh, usually what what we call the jamboree in the end of the year in uh, in, uh, in November. Except that this time, um, because of the lockdown, the jamboree is not happening, and the whole IGM competition is happening online. Uh, so it's a huge shift, and uh, and the idea is um, the I will be inviting, uh, and IGM will be inviting the IGM teams to join Drogo uh, to um, have a look also to what's going on in the in the community to join hands also with existing projects. But also the idea is that. Um, the, the IGM team will be able to use Jogo to facilitate inter-IGM team collaborations. Um, and so um, it's something we're going to build uh, along the next weeks and you'll, you'll know more about how this is going to happen. But I think it's, uh, um, now IGM is one of the most fantastic community out there um, you know, of students of doing open science and biotechnologies. So having them, you know, um, more having more links to this community with uh, the our community currently is definitely good news. Um, so so that's that's it. I, I I cannot share actually much more details uh, right now. We'll be probably inviting at the next uh, global community call uh, someone from uh, from IGEM. Maybe Randy will be able to do it. Uh, the the president of IGEM um, and uh, and have like a small uh, chat, you know, about this and how this is going to happen. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, actually regarding iGEM, there is an event happening beginning of next week, which is the opening event of iGEM. It's an online event uh, with some talks uh, where we'll be there with Jogo presenting also uh, the approach. Uh, have a look to um, the, I've put a link in the agenda. Have a look to the iGEM webpage. Um, and uh, if you want to participate, you'll find the information there. Uh, it's open. Um, the next, the next um, update is we just got a new article from Mercury. So as uh, as you heard last time, we have this partnership going on with Mercury, which is a, a journal specialized in in open science and makers, uh, and they just made a special piece regarding 
um, all the work being, you know, being done on diagnostics technologies uh, and open source diagnostics technologies. Um, and so it's a, I think it's a fantastic piece uh, trying to, to, to put together the different projects that are happening in this community. Um, so, so if you didn't you know, see it, the link is in the agenda too. And, uh, and uh, so that's, that's, if you want to share it, you're welcome. Uh, I think it's very, it's a, it, it really reflects the way that this community is working. And I, I like it very much, especially the fact that um, it's been quite unique so far to have a collaboration between community laboratories, startups, and also public authorities. Um, and that's, that's really fantastic. Um, the final update is we're actually looking for uh, a social media wizard. Uh, so we had some actually hard time to, to, uh, to keep up with all the news um, and, and we, we have so much to share on, the, on you know, and to communicate outside that um, we actually don't find the right time, the right amount of time to do it correctly. And so, um, so we, we want to welcome someone in the team that would like to do that, you know, at least half time, if not full time uh, with us uh, being, you know, it's, it's an actual position. Uh, so um, mostly as a freelancer. Um, so if you're, you know, any of you would be interested or if you know someone that would be interested, please, um, can you get in touch? That would be fantastic. Um, and that's it for me, actually. And uh, I will actually give the, the mic to Mark so that we can have our usual and uh, very nice updates regarding the community dynamics. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> I have the impression to be in, the, you know, in like the CNN or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> All right, so I, I think you're all getting used to this little update. So it's kind of the weekly uh, insights uh, that, that we can get from the activity on Juggle and on the Slack. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's almost frozen in time. Uh, I think now we're, we know that we're uh, having a lot of visibility in France and in the US, but it's still the case that it's uh, uh, coming from a bit everywhere around the world uh, with around 250 people per day now. And, we have pretty constant still uh, uh, registration on the platform. Uh, we do have, um, so half of the people come directly to the site because uh, they have, uh, uh, you know, they know the address of a project or, you know, and what is really good is that uh, this person here called the bounce rate, I've been mentioning it in the previous times, uh, this is a proportion of people uh, that when they come, they just come and see one page and then they go away somewhere else, right? Uh, and and that's, uh, that's something we want to minimize. And the ideal uh, uh, proportion you want to reach normally is 40%. Uh, and wow. we began... Uh, do, do, you have, do you have slides or...? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Oh my goodness. Yes. All right. So, um, <laughs> this is a map of the world, this is, uh, and this is a famous number. Uh, so, yes, this is better. Uh, this is, so this is a retention number, and that's something you want to get close to 40%. And we began, in the beginning of the Open COVID community, we began at around 85% uh, bounce rate, which means that most of people were just coming seeing you know like the page and, and going somewhere else what that means is that now people are, are coming to stay and do some activities around uh, which shows also that we're uh, getting into another phase uh, of the of the of the program and of the community uh, so i indeed saw that makery uh, released an article because i saw also in the analytics that uh, it's it it led us to some referrals uh, also towards uh, towards the Duggle, uh, the Duggle website. Uh, on the Slack activity level, uh, we, I mean, I think we don't have so many people coming anymore. So we have 10 new members on the Slack uh, and still an active core of 350 people. As you see, the activity is slowly uh, getting to this, uh, to this core, uh, but we're pretty, maybe in the last two weeks, we're pretty stable. Um, this is uh, the new people coming. Uh, so the skills of the new people coming, some microfabrication, microfluidic 
cooperation, open science, uh, product development, and uh, of the new needs. So I didn't really check the new project, but there seemed to be some sound design, storytelling, game design. Uh, so if you know of people with those skills, uh, there are some needs still uh, on the new projects uh, for, for, for these skills. Uh, for the past week, uh, actually, we've been doing a lot of work on the on the recorder system, and Luis is in the call, but he's one of the of, of our uh, uh, coders spearheading uh, really this uh, uh, this work. So uh, he's he's one of the person that has populated that a lot, uh, and uh, and so also on on bio, I see biological project. Maybe that they will update us later on what was happening uh, on, on that side. Uh, so that's uh, the network in the Slack uh, for the past week, the so text mentions. So for example, here, this is the, the, the meta study group. Uh, there is the coordination in the middle. Uh, what you see is Alex here reaching out to a lot of, of people. And maybe Alex, you will uh, uh, tell us a bit more about this, uh, uh, the, the feedback from there. Uh, so we clearly see that there is a, coordination happening here uh, and the, the bio people here. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to go too long over the onboarding. So again, the, the, these are the people that arrived during the week. They all arrive on these uh, onboarding channels and then are linked to other surrounding channels. Uh, and and, and uh, Camille and, and Alex can tell us more about uh, this as well. Uh, in terms of new channels, uh, I haven't, uh, I think maybe we talked about it last week about the smart mobile lab, uh, but that's the only uh, new channel that there's been over the past week. Uh, and uh, so maybe you will hear more about that. Uh, and other than that, our next meeting will be in two weeks and the whole meeting, it will be a two hour meeting on recommender system with a journal club on uh, what kind of recommender systems are used in science uh, and a more technical part on, on the way we design it and, and, and decisions on, on, uh, on how it's gonna, how it's gonna uh, interact with people on the platform and by email. So feel free to join uh, if you're interested. And that's it on my end. Uh, you're muted, Thomas. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ma. Um, as, as you've seen, the, um, so we've been working very much on the recommendation system. And, um, and so at the end, it would, you know, the recommendation will be efficient uh, only if you actually like what you've been re you're being recommended. So uh, if you're interested in helping us on really understand this whole thing uh, and giving uh, feedbacks, uh, you know, I think, I think those meetings will be very important. Uh, we really appreciate uh, if you could, uh, if you could participate. Um, all right. Um, I think next I'm going to call uh, Alix uh, so that she can tell us more about what has been going on in the global coordination uh, of the program. Great. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thomas. Um, I'm just going to share my screen real quick um, to share some slides. So, um, can you guys all hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. I, uh, I, I chuckled at the, the visual of Slack with me in the middle connected to, with everybody. Um, uh, probably most of you on this call have heard from me at some point in the last week. I've been working with a few others on doing some serious outreach um, to implement the user groups that I've talked about over the last few weeks. Um, so, this is uh, a new tool that we're implementing that is um, aiming to bridge uh, to bridge project teams with uh, people that they need to um, be able to complete their their solutions. Um, so these are specific skills, specific profiles that they're looking for, and so we're using user groups to put that together. So the way that we're going about this is we're working off of both uh, the Jogal data from the Jogal platform, but also um, when people join the, um, the Slack or when they join Jogal, they fill out a, an initial survey and they put in their skills and expertise. And so we've been working off of that to build out these user groups. 
And the idea is that uh, if you have a specific need uh, within your project channel, you can tag the user groups using the different names of the groups and um, and you can, uh, and then they'll all get notifications. So how to find the user groups, if you guys, can, can you still see my screen with the Slack right now? Or are you looking at, hold on. Yeah, we can, what? yeah. Okay. Um, so the way that you find the user groups on Slack um, is to go up at the people section um, and on, the user group tab uh, right here. On the user groups tab, you'll see the different user groups. Um, currently, not everybody can create a new user group, but anyone can join an existing group. So if we've forgotten about you um, and you are a physicist, for example, um, you would just go and edit members and add yourself. Similarly, if we've added you and you're getting notifications and you don't think that you can add any value as a physicist or something of the sort, you can um, go ahead and go in here to remove um, your name from the list. So uh, that's kind of the story behind uh, my reaching out to a lot of people. Um, another quick announcement that's kind of piggybacking off of what Thomas shared earlier about the social media uh, wizard, and I like that term, is that we're uh, recruiting community leads and um, those are people that are going to help us uh, coordinate the community in terms of greeting new members, guiding um, people through the Open COVID-19 initiative on Slack and Jogo, um, people that are going to help with the, the matchmaking with project teams and experts that they're seeking, and then people to help moderate um, some of the conversations. So if that interests you, um, as well as work on social media co coordination or monitoring and evaluation of projects and general kind of ad hoc uh, program coordination tasks, uh, you can click on the link. Um, I'll add this to the agenda as well and fill out the application form. So um, thank you for those of you on this call who have filled this out. It's great to have um, you know, more engagement from people in the community. And if you're, if you've been part of the community and you're not, still not quite sure how to play a role um, or where you fit in, um, this might be a good place for you to get involved. I think that's it for me. Um, yeah, I'll pass it over to the communications team. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Hans? Yes. Hi everyone, this is Hans with a quick update from the communications team. So this week we're welcoming Claire and Benjamin to the team, which is amazing news because that means we'll finally be able to have a bit more output on our social media. For example, Benjamin's been hard at work um, announcing the community call and then starting to post on our platforms. There was Chris Graham came to our Slack channel to ask if we could advertise the grant review, the new round of uh, applications. So that's been done by Benjamin. Uh, and that's an example of if there's anything you would like to advertise with the world, then you can go as usual to the, the draft folder, uh, which is in the agenda. There's the link. Um, and you make a Google document in which you can write your post. And I've checked, I've made sure that you definitely have permission to do this now. So in that, in that folder, you can now add the document. I think the best thing to do next is actually to come to our Slack channel, which is called Program Communications Team, and then put the link to the post you've drafted, and then we'll make sure it's top notch, and, um, and then we can upload it for you on all our platforms. And as always, if you have any of you have an account with Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, then please engage with our posts because they'll be then sent to more people and that's gonna help us all out. Uh, and that's it for me this week. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you, Hans. Um, so I think, I think it's pretty much um, all, oh no, we have actually to hear from, uh, from the student engagement group uh, with Putin, right? Yes, we do. Hi. So I guess we just have a couple of uh, quick, quick um, updates 
Uh, one, we would like to hear updates from any students and early career members about what they've been up to in and out of COVID or if they're still looking for a project or something to do. And just a reminder that we do have a meeting tomorrow at um, 10 a.m. PST or 1 a.m. EST and or 7 p.m. CET and this is not on the agenda because we're still finalizing it but we have we it sounds like we're going to be able to partner with Gmod in Seattle which has this really amazing um lab really amazing um, lab management platform that kind of is meant to reflect the physical lab. And so we reached out to them and asked if they would be willing to host s several groups of projects or that might want to design experiments or store co protocols in the place of having a physical lab. And so we're trying to work out the details on that, but hoping that could be launched at the end of the month and see if we can have some students interested in kind of an alternate way of ga gaining lab experience when a lot of these opportunities are now gone. But, and also meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. CET. I think that's all from me. Okay, thank you so much, Bodin. Um, and uh, and I think uh, that would be also a great, uh, the, the arrival of iGEM and the iGEM community would be also a, a, a great point for the whole student engagement team. Um, all right, so now we're going to get to the best part of this call. Uh, we want to hear more from you. Um, and the first project we'll be calling is uh, the Corona Detective Project with Rachel. Uh, we cannot hear you, Rachel. I hope this down. Hello? Hello. So, um, yes, I'm really excited because uh, we've been starting to get some real results, not only with control RNAs, but also with some viral specific sequences, part of the um, nuclear caps. And um, what I wanted to tell you about today is especially this Corona detected. So this project nucleic acid um, amplification includes several different um, methods and we sort of have a sister project with the colorimetric method, but our method is really trying to use uh, sort of quenched fluorescence to see the detection of this um, viral specific uh, segment. And um, the real idea of the corona detective isn't any sort of diagnostics really, but more detection in the environment. So the idea is that it's really analogous to something already known, the GMO detective, where you have these dried down um, reagents in a little set of eight strips. And these are then, um, can be shipped anywhere around the world with no problem of cold chain dependence. And so, um, I had a, a really big plan to do a bunch of optimizations of the different open data that's out there and uh, find the best combination of molecular probes. And today I got the first real nice results and I'm gonna try. Oh, you muted yourself. Back. Okay, I'm back again here. So I think if I just open here, but now I don't have my, I opened all these windows and now they're not showing. Are you trying to share your screen? Rachel? She's muted. Yeah. Rachel, you're muted. Yeah. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Sorry about that. And I was trying to share my screen. Ah, now I understand why it wasn't sharing. So now this is the big result of today. Um, so it's comparing, uh, it's an endpoint, and it's really very similar to what it would look like with the um, corona detective, we call it, in analogy to the GMO detective. And so here you can see two different set of primers. I don't know if you can see me moving the arrow around, but you can see there's this very bright green fluorescence here and a whole bunch of bright green fluorescence in all of these other eight tubes. And basically, um, it means that one of the sets of primers is looking like it has much less background and a really nice specific signal. 
all the way through in an hour. Of course, both of them actually came up. Um, let me see if I can show the other nice picture. So at an early time point, so I had to hack a really old qPCR machine to get these results. And so the first set that comes up when, I don't know if you can see my arrow moving around here, yes. but, uh, good. so then this is the, um, the one that has more background. So you can see here, all this level here is background, but it came up about four minutes, three minutes faster than this other set. But in the end, actually I didn't put the picture of the end, but it's in the Slack. And all the way to the end, um, the one stays very low in terms of background, but it's really specific. And the other one has much higher background throughout. And um, we hope that with this machine that I've hacked, we'll be able to optimize more things. And I just finally got a, um, a quote for the special kit that they have for calibrating the machine. And I just wanted to show you that um, actually, this is how I calibrated it about a week ago um, with fluorescein, a sort of DIY hack calibration, and it really worked well. And today I got the quote and it was 1900 Swiss francs. Wow. for the calibration kit and then with the other 96 well played um to double check the calibration it would have been over 2500 swiss francs wow. so i'm really glad we're making progress and um it's really a nice collaboration with everybody else to get this nucleic acid amplification to work well well amazing results uh thank you so much Rachel, and everyone in the team um and so the next project we want to hear about is uh, the Breezy, the crisis emergency ventilator. Um, Did you turn off my screen sharing, I hope? Oh yeah, I can do that for you. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think I can do it. Okay. Yeah. So hi, this is Adam uh, from Breezy Project. Uh, there has not been uh, much uh, progress in this project uh, last week, but uh, we plan to uh, continue during the following weekend. So uh, I hope <coughs> uh, next uh, community call we can report uh, more success, more pro progress. Uh, we are now working on, well, th there has been some little progress on uh, designing mechanical uh, design of, of the uh, control panel. So there will be some uh, some knobs which you will be used to set up parameters and uh, yeah, there's been um, some little programming about this but uh, yeah, this the next weekend we plan implementing some algorithms and that we can so we can control the machine uh, and we'll be doing some verification and so on so stay tuned <laughs> and uh, we'll report the progress uh, in a week yeah, then. And good luck with uh, with the progress. Um, Thanks. So um, the next project is uh, quantified flu, but Bastian said that he will not be able to be there. Uh, but he actually wrote down uh, a few updates. I'm just going to read them. Uh, what Bastian is saying is they just finished adding support for Google Fit wearables, which is great news. So as a reminder, Quantified Flu is using personal data coming from wearables uh, to look at if there is any, you know, signatures that could indicate if you're COVID-19 positive or not. And um, so this this is great great news for them because they'll be able to uh, to have more data coming in. Um, they also are working on adding Garmin wearable support, and also they have started drafting data visualization for for the data. Uh, and you can find uh, a link in the agenda to have a look to the draft date. Um, the next project is uh, the mass spectrometry base detection with Nivi. I don't know if Nivi is still with us. She had some issues with connecting. Nivi? I guess, I guess she had to... Uh... Nivi left because there were some connection issues right. on her end. Okay, so we'll hear from her next time then. Um, and um, and she said basically that she's preparing a proposal for submission uh, for the third macro grants round. So uh, we'll be hearing more from her in the, in the very near future. And the next project is the basic respirator by Hunter Futo. Uh, Hunter, are you here? Yes. 
Hi, I'm here. Hi. Um, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link into the into the chat. So um, I took a couple days off last week, so not a huge um, not a huge update for me. But um, I'm waiting to get confirmation from the VHA on whether or not they'll test the mask for uh, FDA approval. So they'll they'll kind of fast track it through that system. Um, and then I've been um, I put a link in if in case anyone is curious about the the testing process for respirators, um, I put a link to a Google document um, of all the different tests that are required. Um, there's still quite a lot. Um, for official approval, there's a ton. Um, so this is a, this is a smaller subset, um, but there's still quite a bit. Um, and then this is cool. I've been 3D printing faces. So um, I guess let me turn it this way. Um, originally masks uh, were fitted for young white men in the military because that's the facial, facial data they had from the 60s. Um, like 60s and 70s. So NIOSH took a survey and they, they scanned, um, I don't remember how many, there was, the sample was like 3,500 people, but they scanned a bunch of different faces and then they measured faces and they came up with um, a bunch of characteristics and have five uh, facial shapes. So this is the small version, um, probably a bit more feminine. Um, and they have these head forms. So I've just been 3D printing them and then testing, testing the mask um, to make sure that it fits the, uh, a better video testing my mask to make sure that it fits the face properly um, obviously this is a large mask so it doesn't fit quite well but um, this has been great for prototyping um, so that's been cool to, to be able to, to to be able to do uh, fit uh, fit testing in a quarantine kind of situation since I can't get people um, I do have the faces um, and then uh, so beyond that I, I have some um, materials coming this week I'm gonna make a bunch of prototypes for testing um, again, according to the document that um, that I sent out, but yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hunter. Um, mm -hmm. Loving the, the three printed face <laughs> in gold. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I have friends now, so that's, <laughs> it's, it's so sad. I'm so lonely. I'm printing my friends. <laughs> All right. Um, the next project we want to hear about is um, the Selfie Sensors project with uh, Vesta. Um, are you here, Vesta? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Um, so yeah, so we have been a little slow, but we finally, uh, we were working on um, getting uh, good targets for uh, RNA sensors to detect uh, parts of the genome. Um, and we were having, um, sorry, yeah, so we made a code, basically. Um, uh, which is available on GitHub for determining optimized targets. And so the search criteria is not just for the amplification step. In our case, we're doing a NASBA amplification, but it's also uh, for downstream detection. So for the accessibility for uh, the amplicons uh, to be accessible for the RNA sensors. So basically the code searches for sequences that are unique to the SARS-CoV-2 genome. Uh, with minimal consecutive nucleotide runs and with about a 50% GC content and also amplicons that will give the most linear structures. So not just for like the thermo, the most thermostable structure, but also for the statistical population of different structures. Um, so yeah, and we've also done a mutational analysis of about 8,000 uh, SARS-CoV-2 genomes, which we got from GISAID uh, back in April. And yeah, so we've, we've chosen three targets, um, one from the NG, uh, one from ORF1AB, and one from ORF3. Um, and so we're excited to move on to the next step, uh, which will be to confirm that it actually works for NASBA amplification. And once we've gotten that, we'll be able to uh, do the RNA sensors. Uh, yeah, and anyone who is interested in having a consensus sequence for 8,000 SARS-CoV-2 genomes, uh, just let us know and we can, uh, we'll, we'll give you that. And we're also gonna update our project page soon. So it'll be on there too. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, I don't know if uh, any, uh, any of the teams are still working on, uh, on diagnostic wants to, to react. Maybe there are some, uh, some, uh, some synergies here. Um. Yeah, we're actually working with Francisco. So uh, right. he's doing the work for a lamp and for uh, selfie sensors. Awesome, great, great to hear. Um, all right, so thank you so much.
Um, this time I'm going to call for the next project. If I can switch my windows, okay. Um, the, so the next project is the bioreactor project with Adrienne. Uh, Adrienne, are you here? Oh no, uh, he's not here, but I'm on his behalf. All right. Um, Hi, David. Uh, Hi everyone, I'm David. Probably this is the first time that you see me around. Um, we are um, at the bioreactor project divided uh, by three sub teams. So I'm coordinating the micro, the molecular microbiology team. And um, well, this is a lot of work for, for, for this project, but um, I have a few updates. Unfortunately, I have not prepared any slide for this um, presentation. But what I'm telling you guys is that um, we are um, at this moment with the first iteration of the bioreactor. We have already the mechanical part that have been integrated into the software that have been developed by the software people. And uh, we are deploying that uh, first prototype to three of the labs that we have uh, the facilities uh, and the equipment to test them in order to develop the rest of the uh, protein purification protocols in a simplified format. Um, I think um, the PCB boards are already been on the on, on, on the way to be uh, reviewed with the final details in order to uh, start uh, uh, to, to 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 call it like the final version. And in terms of the gen molecular genetic, we have um, another member of the team that is um, constructing light induced uh, based on a light induced system. Uh, three construction that will be able to synthesize three enzymes, at least the three of the most common for the uh, uh, reagent for the for the COVID-19 testing. And um, there's another member and of the team that probably will be submitting one um, another project that will be uh, focused on developing cheap or low cost media, giving that in for certain um, setup. Uh, uh, it's not so easy to find the reagent like LB media or any of the molecular uh, microbiology uh, reagents on a commercial uh, standard. So one of our member, Nico, is he is uh, developing that part using affordable, uh, low-cost material that can be used for for growing uh, the bacteria that we are going to uh, distribute. And I think finally. Um, there are some uh, modifications on the initial design for the mechanical part, and um, and in my uh, well, in, in my uh, team, we are uh, working on the uh, iMac or the ion uh, affinity uh, chromatography for purification. Uh, we have been developing some uh, sort of uh, new ideas to make it cheaper and in in. Uh, with little uh, material or little um, lab tool that the end user can dispose, so they don't have to have a centrifuge or very expensive materials in the lab in order to purify the protein. So, uh, in general, that's, that's the, the three main um, the three main uh, updates in, in in our team. So, I hope uh, we can we can show you finally the the, the beta version that we already have for for the for the bioreactor. Awesome. Thank you so much, David, uh, and good luck with the progress. Um, so um, next project is the Volt School project, uh, supporting out of school students with STEM education in Nigeria. Uh, and I believe we have someone from the project. Uh... Yes, I'm right here. Hi. Uh, is my name. Hi. I'm going to leave the video off um just because the internet isn't so great today no worries great so uh just um very briefly uh we're still on course to launch the project uh on the first of june um the lockdown has been eased in nigeria um but it's still uh there's a, a phased approach to it and um other than food and other essential services so food uh medicine and you know, the really essential services, it's still um, very, very, very sluggish. Um, so one of the initial things we talked about in our proposal was getting the microscopes out to um, children around the country, you know, doing a competition, getting them in. And 
in the last few days, uh, we realized that um, deliveries that would usually take 24 hours, we have just uh, been able to do them in 11 days. So we think that waiting to do that will set the project back by a lot. And a lot of time has already passed. They've already been home because of the lockdowns for a while and they're still home. Uh, so what we've decided to do is to change our project design a little bit, just change the approach. So, you know, initially we talked about getting the teachers to support the children. Uh, but right now we, we have the teachers preparing materials they're preparing the learning materials we hope that very soon it will be easier to get the microscopes ac across to the children and they can do the practical parts themselves but for now we don't want to wait too much so the teachers are preparing the materials um, it's all stem based and the other thing we're doing again because of time is that the curriculum assessment is happening at the same time so each material that is prepared gets moved on to, um, from the teacher's team, it moves to the quality assurance team, and then we move on. Uh, from the technical point, we've concluded on the technical preliminaries. We have the flow mockups for the database design. The database design itself was completed uh, at the end of last week. The front end client is currently being worked on. Uh, so we know that by next week, hopefully, uh, towards the end of next week, we would start to upload the videos with the teaching materials on the platform. Uh, so yeah, that's it for now. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, do I pronounce your name right? Uh, Obialunamna? It's Obialunamna. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, we're looking forward to hear more from you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next project uh, we'll be hearing from is an actual project because it was um, actually before in the list is the, the LEMP test project uh, with Ellen, Chris, Sarah, Isabella and Mike. Uh, who would like to speak for the project? Oh, you, Ellen, you're muted. Muted. How's that? Good. Yeah, yeah. Sarah's driving. <laughs> so <laughs> Chris and I will have to give the update. Um, I, she did a pretty good job of listing all this stuff. So where we are now is we're struggling with the RNA extraction step because um, it, it seems like there's no way. Everyone would love to go directly into uh, the lamp reaction with a, a human sample. Uh, the problem is you're going to miss a lot of the positive cases because they may not be shedding enormous amounts of virus. So uh, the, the two things that the RNA extraction does is it purifies the RNA away from anything in the mix that might be like in the beginning, everyone was sticking swabs in viral transport media and there were components in the VTM that would interfere with some of the reactions of, of the enzymes. So uh, that's one good reason. But the, uh, an almost more important reason is that you concentrate the RNA. So you can take uh, a couple hundred microliters of sample and elude it into, into, into 50 or less. So you, you can get up to like a tenfold um, uh, concentration of the RNA in the sample or even more uh, if you're willing to go through some more trouble. So it's an important step. The problem is the kits, the RNA extraction kits are prohibitively expensive. And even worse, they're in very short supply. So even the components of the kits uh, are, are back ordered in a lot of cases. And, um, uh, you, you know, we looked at this hillbilly bead protocol, which is are these iron beads, which is um, another way uh, they're, they're coated with silica and the RNA sticks to the silica and you can elude it under different salt conditions. Um, but but those beads, number one, were very expensive. They were like six hundred dollars um, for a lot of beads. And then um, they also were back ordered. Uh, so. We're looking at a silica-based protocol that um, a paper from Harvard just came out. So uh, pretty much all we've been, we've been doing is, uh, is working on that part of it. 
we also would like to use um, buccal swabs or saliva rather than the, the, the swabs in the back of the throat because depending on how uh, brutal you are with those swabs in the throat and the nose, you can get uh, different amounts of, of virus. And apparently there's, there's a high fail rate when people try to do it to themselves because they don't tend to be as aggressive <laughs> as a professional. Um, really the, the, the sort of the, what, what we're doing now is we're waiting for some commercial spit kits that have all, already have emergency use authorization and we're going to try this silica protocol. We're also coordinating with Chris Mason's group at Weill Cornell Medical College that's doing something very similar, and he's hopped on Jogal and is, um, we're going to meet on Friday, apparently. And New England Biolabs that's providing the reagents has also gotten involved, and they, they actually sent us a formal letter from their legal team, which was very encouraging in that the only time that they're uh, th that the patent is going to be activated such that we would need to give royalties or licensing fees is if we're, if we're making and selling a commercial kit. And since none of us are interested in doing that, we might get uh, authorization to use it at a specific site as uh, a lab developed kit. Um, that apparently is fine. So we can confirm that during this meeting that we're having later, but, um, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good deal. So that's where we're at. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered everything. <laughs> and then we're we're actively looking for once we get this um, RNA extraction part done, uh, we're we're actively looking for partners who have access to patient samples who can do the comparison to the, uh, you know, either the WHO or the, or the CDC test on the same sample. Sounds great. Um, as I was saying, um, I've been sending this message also to uh, our partners at PHP in Paris. So, um, so I, I hope that we'll be able to organize something in, uh, in France regarding this. But uh, no, more, more partners are better. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. I mean, great results. It's so encouraging and very exciting. Um, the, so congratulations to all the team. The, the next project we want to hear about is uh, Hackit 19, self-diagnosis heat map according to the diagnosis and cues in the shops and pharmacies. And who wants to speak for this project? I believe um, the person is not there. So um, I'm just going to read what the person wrote. Um, so the team participated to the EU hackathon. Uh, they did not win, but uh, they're still working on the tool. Uh, they made a survey with users in France and Mexico. They got good feedback and ideas to improve the tool, but they want to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, they, had, um, they will have a, a community, uh, My Hood. Uh, they, uh, they need to deliver to Greece, uh, uh, so translation is being made. Um, they need some help. Uh, they're looking for a web, web designer uh, to have a more responsive uh, website uh, and also some ga game expertise to improve the community part. Uh, they have a challenge, which is to keep motivation in the team to make it concrete. Uh, I think it's a pretty um, common uh, challenge. Um, so, so that's it for Hackit19. The next project is Open Enzyme Production uh, with Scott. Scott, are you here? Yep, I'm here. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, this is kind of a consortium of three different groups that are um, doing different aspects of uh, protein production, protein engineering. Uh, so uh, in, um, uh, sorry, just got a, oh, okay, yeah, so uh, in Germany, uh, we have Catherine Haddich that's um, uh, with Team Epilamp, and she's exploring, um, uh, looking at ways to optimize the enzymes by mutating them. Um, and then in Chicago, there's Team BioBlaze, and that's uh, primarily run by Isaac Larkin, uh, but with support from Sarah, who you've already heard about here. Uh, and they're looking at um, uh, trying to do um, low-cost 
expression strat or purification strategies. Um, so doing different types of fusion partners, and this is kind of coming from the free genes uh, development. So um, uh, we've collectively um, been uh, putting together a whole panel of um, um, potentially low cost purification techniques. The typical purification is to use a histidine tag on the protein and use a nickel column. Those nickel columns are expensive, um, so we're trying to get around that. Um, and then my group is also looking at um, uh, comparing the traditional protein expression techniques, uh, including the nickel columns, uh, but also um, doing cellular reagents, which are a low cost way of um, uh, producing enzymes and we'll be able to compare them. And these can get fed into um, the, um, the NEB lamp uh, at our um, groups to be able to test in theirs so they could try getting away from the commercial enzymes, which are also very expensive. So we're putting in a, a, a group grant. Sounds great. Um, thank you so much, Scott. Um, and um, so then the next projects uh, that we want to hear about from the existing project is the global free webinars. We have two more projects coming up, but which are new. Uh, so the global free webinars, uh, I think this is going to be me. Hey, Hi. Virginia, right. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, okay, so basically my update is we already started this week, we gave three webinars. Um, for now, the webinars are more, um, so we did them in Spanish and in English. We have one in French next week in Congo. Um, and then we're talking, yeah, with Congo, with uh, India, and we have a webinar in Nepal that we're struggling a bit to find a speaker because um, the people in Nepal wanted more a webinar oriented towards more the economic, uh, burden of the pandemic and so far all the webinars that we've been doing were, were either on virology or on epidemiology. Um, Rachel are you waving because you're leaving or yeah. because you're interested in participating? Um, <laughs> she has to go actually. <laughs> okay <laughs> great because we are really uh, if somebody can think of anyone they know that um, that may be interested in giving a webinar on the economical side of the pandemic um, we're really, really in need of that right now because we have uh, this, this request in Nepal that we don't want to leave unanswered. And for the rest, we're having pretty much daily meetings with different schools. Uh, it's moving a lot and extremely fast. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with the results so far. What, what do you share your, um, your needs in terms of speakers? Uh, so far, we've been doing mostly communication in our Slack, but I definitely need to update our Jogel website. I've been saying I would do it for like three days, and I didn't. So I promise this evening before going to sleep, I will put all these things in the needs of my Jogel. Don't hesitate to, uh, to use the Slack, the, the Open COVID-19 Slack too. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you, you can uh, maybe like in the random... Uh, Channel. Yeah, and, and there's the there's a channel for that actually. Now that you say it, mm -hmm. um, if we need resources or skills, then I can put in the looking for skills. Right. I will write that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Virginia. Um, the so we have two new projects that wants to uh, to um, well to introduce themselves. Uh, the first is uh, is a project done by uh, Julie Fuccini. Uh, if that's the, the way to pronounce your name, I'm sorry if I've pronounced it uh, wrong. Uh, it's a combination, uh, combination um, entry blocker. Um, I'm not going to pronounce the name of your project because it's basically very complicated. I don't know how to actually <laughs> say it. Um, but you will do it better than, than me. Uh, Julie, are you here? Uh, hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Uh, I'm Julie Fissini, a pharmacy student. So I'm new here. I don't know if uh, my project can be called a project, so I need some help for this. Uh, I don't know what I'm, I'm going to speak uh, about. Can you, can you introduce your ID, maybe? Uh, what you're looking for? Uh, so I'm looking for um, help in biology and chemistry fields uh, to uh, review these projects. So I need a neurobiologist, virologist, clinicians, 
to see if this project can be uh, can be realized. Can you explain us what is your project? Uh, your my project is uh, 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 question, questions uh, are, are made of questions. So I need people to answer these question, these questions. I have maybe. Uh, I mean, what 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 is the end goal? What what are you studying? Uh, I'm studying a scientific approach of uh, of uh, the nicotinic pathway because uh, I think that this is the solution for. Uh, sorry for my poor English. No <laughs> but, uh, this is a um, maybe uh, maybe uh, the solution for this uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, this SARS-CoV-2 infection is actually uh, combination treatments. So I wanted to speak with the community about that. Okay. Uh, that's clear. So basically you you have some intuition about uh, how um, nicotine uh, pathway uh, could be used to treat patients and you want to, um, to speak about this ID uh, and how to actually go, um, what, are the, what would be the next step for you? So you have a, a form with uh, some questions that uh, people would be able to answer, that's right? Yes, that's right, and I need uh, a lot of data and, uh, okay, and clinical access to this data if okay. possible. So um, regarding uh, patient data, you should definitely speak with um, people at the Humans, uh, Open Humans Foundation. Um, they, they are used actually to deal with uh, um, like open data from patients, for example, and patients in general. Um, you can find them uh, either on Drogol or on the Slack, uh, Open Humans, and their, their project on, on Open COVID-19 is, um, is uh, actually, I forgot the name again, it's called Quantified Flu. Um, so you can actually look for them and, and you know, ask some questions about how, how, what would be the best approach for you to have. Okay, and I don't know if uh, any of the projects are working on the similar ideas with mine. I <laughs> don't a... believe so. Okay, that's it. Okay. But I may be wrong. Um, have, did you have a look to the whole uh, you know, list on Jogo of projects? Sorry? Did you have a look to the, to the list of projects on Jogo? Uh, not yet. I'm, I'm so still I, new I, will start here, there. I don't know what I'm making. This so <laughs> this is the first uh, a first uh, for me. So if okay. you can explain, to me, that's uh, that's right. okay. So you no, know, contact me on Slack uh, after the call, and we can uh, we can discuss, and I can introduce you to uh, how we can make uh, make this happen. Okay. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Julie. Um, so, so the, the other project is, uh, is, uh, is done by Sophie Lynn and George Elric. It's about mental health support. Uh, and they want to propose a, a Friday a weekly webinar on finding your inner peace with guided med med meditation. I think we also need that. Uh, Sophie or George, are you here? I'm here. Um, George has meetings for the next two weeks during this time. And he's in LA. So um, it's only like 10 AM over there right now. But thank you guys for giving me the one minute. So we wanted to start offering people some mental health support because a lot of our lives have come to a screeching halt during this time. And there's been a lot of pivoting and redirecting. And a lot of people have been feeling very lost or disheartened or just don't know what the next steps are. Like for example, um, I've got a fashion background and I just got back from Fashion Weeks. Um, London was February, and I got back from Paris in March. And then all of a sudden it was like, everything's grounded. Nobody cares about fashion anymore. The whole world is dying. What are you gonna do now? You know, so I had to pivot my entire life. And um, it's been great actually doing this, um, being on board with, you know, the, co the open COVID-19 has been kind of a lifeline for me because it helped me um, anchor. And um, so anyway, this is how I met George was through this. And we started talking about how we can contribute um, mentally. And we came up with a couple of very helpful webinars. And the one that we want to offer on Friday is about how to find your inner peace. 
So this is gonna be a presentation, um, specific steps into how to find your inner peace, some physical activities that you can do on your own, and also a guided meditation to end the 40 minutes. So we have not decided to open it up to open discussion yet because we're not sure how open people are to sharing and we don't wanna impose it on anybody. So I think we'll do baby steps and see how this evolves. I hope you guys can join us Friday, 1 p.m. Central Time, which is I think 8 p.m. Um, Paris time and just keep checking back in Slack on the mental health channel. I put it in the chat, um, what the channel looks like and um, hope to see you guys there. All right, thank you so much, Sophie. Sounds, uh, sounds very, very useful in these times. <laughs> um, so this was uh, the last update. Uh, and so this, for closing our call, I will be calling everyone um, to activate their video stream so that we can have this stuff, like the traditional group picture, basically. Um, and uh, so that we can share uh, your emotion and your enthusiasm about this community and the project being done to the rest of the world. Um, so I think we got almost everyone. Um, yes, it's getting there, it's getting there. <laughs> yes, almost there, almost there, almost there. <laughs> Um, all right, I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to do a screen capture. Can you say hi? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, again, for uh, participating to this call and sharing your updates. Uh, everything is so exciting, and I'm looking forward to see you all next week. Bye-bye.